It's time for us to talk tax. And uh, this morning we're going to be discussing taxation and the digital economy. I have been joined by the two wonderful gentlemen, Leonard Shankote and Jeffrey Okansi. They're going to help us to understand a bit better um, the issues involved in taxation and the digital economy. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you all doing? Uh, very well, then. Thanks for having us. Yeah. How's the uh, preparations towards Christmas? Uh, well, I want to actually officially disassociate myself from this year's Christmas celebration. Because, hey. um, you know, it, it's a personal decision. Um, but I wish all of you what, were, what, a very well. What, what, what led to this decision? Um, it, sounds like, it seems like a very strange decision to take at such a time. Oh, this. for the world, which is I have a box of them for all of you. Merry Christmas to all of you. But uh -huh. personally, I want but to. But that's, that's. No, listen, listen. If you are wishing somebody well, and you have presence for people. That's participation. So how then do you say that? And you then still you, you just yourself? nailed where I was running away from the president's angle, you know. So actually, for, for, for officially disassociating myself means I won't give presents. Mm -hmm. So wishing you well is right for my heart. That goes all free okay. to you. Mm -hmm. And wishing you the best of the Yulitide. It's okay. been good a year. Mm -hmm. Sounds very mischievous. Then. I don't know where he's coming <laughs> from. <but. laughs> all right. So um, let's... Let's talk about the digital economy. Right. Um, break it down for us, and then let's look at the angle of taxation and how feasible, how practical, um, what, what is the government doing or should they be doing in order to benefit much from a tax regime um, without necessarily overstressing the populace. Mm. I don't know any of you can take it. Sure. So I think uh, the digital economy provides both opportunities and some uh, concerns mm. as well, particularly for uh, the tax authorities, okay. uh, because now it has scaled up most businesses and it makes uh, products and services easily, ac easily accessible. Uh, but then with that has also come the challenge for the taxman because some of these businesses operate remotely and you might not find them physically present within your jurisdiction. Mm. So um, identifying them or even uh, determining the extent of business, uh, sorry, uh, financial activities mm. that they are engaging mm. uh, can be uh, difficult. Let me, let me interject here by breaking it down for our viewers to sort of practically get an understanding of what are the sort of things we're talking about here. So yesterday, for example, um, I just, you know, having a conversation with one of my colleagues and I said, listen, I need new belts, belts for my trousers. I need new belts, right? How do I get new belts? I'm here from morning to evening. By the time I'm done, the shops that I'm going to get the belt from is also closed, you know, so I need to get in your belts. And then she said, oh, I know someone who sells belts mm -hmm. in her shop. Let me call. So she calls. Person arrives here within maybe 20, 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. The person is here. And I'm actually just about to go on air, right? So communication is happening on WhatsApp. Yeah. Transaction is done. Mm. I make a mobile money payment. Mm -hmm. Person has taken delivery of, 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 of their money, money, left the products for me. When I finish, I go down, I pick my products, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Business transaction is taking place. Nobody is inconvenienced. Every, everything has happened really nice and smoothly. Mm -hmm. This has come to stay. Yes. How does the government yeah, benefit? But, but, but in terms of uh, the implications yes. for domestic revenue, yes. Uh, the challenge is mm. bigger or wider mm. uh, than that. Explain. Uh, because even for this particular transaction, mm. you are looking at a business that is uh, maybe domicile within this jurisdiction. Okay. I mean, you can buy that same belt from Alibaba yes. or you can go on eBay. Yes. And this could be... Maybe even the person I bought it from imported it from Alibaba, uh, let's say. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so the implication is that, I mean, previously, with mm. the previous model that mm. our tax authorities are used to, uh, for uh, outsiders to transact businesses within this particular yeah. uh, jurisdiction, one, they need to have maybe their manufacturing set up here. 
If not, uh, they need to have some marketing activities mm -hmm. or distribution activities. Yeah. So uh, some of these activities also come with jobs and transactions mm. that then become liable to taxation mm -hmm. and therefore revenue for yeah. the state. But then what, if you have a company operating far away <laughs> from your jurisdiction yeah. yeah. and then selling directly to con uh, consumers here, it becomes very, f one, I mean, some of these accompanying uh, business opportunities mm. do not come with it. Mm. So the opportunity for taxes on the transactions that comes with it, or even from direct employment mm. by those companies for the taxman becomes uh, less. Yeah. Uh, and then you look uh, at the second uh, challenge, uh, like the one that you, you, identi you, you identify. So mm. you can have uh, some of these transactions take place, and that is if the, uh, the GRA, and, uh, a body like the GRA, has a way of determining uh, from third parties uh, whether the, 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 the extent or amount that have been transacted over a period, then maybe that particular transaction that got you your belt could bring in some revenue. Mm. But then if the GRA does not have the capacity to know that this particular transaction took place, yeah. then <laughs> that's, that's, that's revenue loss mm. uh, to, 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 to the country. So you realize that if it, uh, even though uh, the digital economy and the advancement in uh, the e-wealth comes with a lot of opportunities and advantages, you realize that for, <laughs> for the tax for man, yeah. you realize that the old model of business that they, they, they're still using uh, or, or printing weight makes it difficult for them to effectively uh, tax uh, service, uh, services and products that go on, on some of these platforms. Mm. It's the same thing that we have in weight, uh, this Kelney uh, and GVG issues. It comes, how do you ascertain? Yeah. Mm, how do you have the capacity to verify? Mm. And yeah. that is where the problem is. So you sublet to a, uh, a third party. Mm -hmm. It means that you have to have the optimal yeah. <laughs> trust. If you cannot trust the companies and the records that they are giving, uh, they are providing for you for the purposes of tax, and mm. you sublet that service to a third party, it means that you have to. You need to have that utmost trust. In, 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 in that company that yeah. they will give you the right, the right info. information because mm -hmm. without that information uh, you will be in the dark and you will not know uh, the quantum of uh, transactions in there and therefore uh, you might be under <laughs> under, mm -hmm. under 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 taxing yeah. yeah yeah what do you have anything to, add I, to I, that? yeah right I think I think I think uh, this is not as if the GRA is not aware. I mean, government is aware when you look at the budget. Mm. The, 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 there was an item in there okay. that is where the GRA themselves talks about a technology-led tax administration. Mm. And that uh, marries with their other point, which also looks at capacity building of staff. Okay. You know, so like, uh, rightly, like my brother said, I mean, there's an area, especially the, the telecom area, mm -hmm. you know, where the decal uh, issues really, really, really happen there. Yeah. And one point fact clear is mm. that the GRA themselves, I mean the tax authorities themselves, accept. And for that reason, went in for a third party. Mm. You know. But when you look at what happened yesterday on the front page of the graphic, actually, telling you that we've moved, we, we, we should have, uh, from 22 million Ghana cities, we're now getting 56 million Ghana cities. Mm. Uh, I mean, that is a vast difference, yeah. you know, we're losing about 3 million cities a month. You know, when, 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 when you look at such figures, you know, every day on this show, I've been telling you, mm. I don't believe we have the capacities yeah. to even be actually rightly detecting. What The first thing is to, uh, to detect yeah. what is going on in there, actually look at it very well and compile. Mm. I mean, I saying the cost. Before yeah. you even put a, a charge together and say, mm. this is how much is due us that mm. you have with you, you have to give to us. Mm. And so when you look at even the oil industry as well, you know, as to whether, I, you know, every time I, I speak about these two industries, yeah. the telecom and then the oil industry, I, yeah. I say, do we have the capacity to detect and actually calculate properly 
what is owed us mm. and be collecting it because it is after every time that we get to see yeah. or hear yeah. and then they go back i mean yeah. i mean it happened in 2016 it happened in 2017 with the oil companies okay mm. and then we had to go back and collect the money millions of dollars you know so if if this is what happens that is which ones you've detected mm. so which ones are, are you not detecting yeah. you know so and, and, and it's an issue of uh, having the capacity that's where actually it ends i mean having the capacity and then making sure you have the right tools to track mm. when you track get the right figures and collect because when you look at taxation in that digital space it's actually it could be very easy and it can easily also elude you mm. because it could be easy in the sense that these are machines so you do your calculations and tabulations you don't need to be walking around Makola and be dealing with one person at a time but this one is yeah. actually all loaded on one network you can easily network all of them they all pull into one pool and then you can easily assess them sitting by one computer how easy it is mm. you can also easily have somebody just giving you the wrong information and you can easily lose all the money yeah. and then later you detect mm. when you detect the ones that you detect is the ones you are going for mm. mind you how much of it have you lost that you could not detect mm. and that means what people keep saying that we need to actually put a deliberate effort in training the tax collectors yeah. to get them to be well, well, well equipped to tax the right figures. Let me ask a question here. Do we have tax incentives in our regime where people are encouraged by the incentives to actually pay taxes? Do we have that? Because I know other countries have, you know, incentives for taxpayers. So if you pay your taxes, there are certain things that are afforded you as a taxpayer. Tell you no amazing words. I mean, our campaign, mm. our campaign, it, it's, it's not more like a, a, a lover boy issue for us. It is not one, one, one great area we, we, we encourage, you know. But we, we also see that, like you're rightly saying, we see it in a different way where you could, you, you could, that incentive could be polished, let's to say, I pay my taxes on time. Mm. And maybe I'll expect some goods within some period. Yeah. Where you can talk about postponing my payment, you know, like sending, uh, brought forward. And then I'll still pay, but then it will be deferred yeah. for me. Yeah. These are some of the uh, uh, incentives we will be pushing for. Okay. Because, of course, already we are running at a deficit mm. as a country. We are running mm. at a deficit. I yeah. mean, what but we should see, be collecting. Yeah, but you see, if you're running at a deficit, the whole idea should be a long-term gain, right? Mm. So, that the, so that the country is looking at the possibility of creating a, a groundswell of tax payment where people are growing, the, 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 the numbers are growing that are paying taxes willingly. Because that's what you want, I, I tell you what. That's what you're other, looking for. Yeah. There are other right? factors, plus your incentives. Mm -hmm. no, no, I'm, not, I'm not downplaying on that. Mm -hmm. Plus your incentives. Mm -hmm. There are other factors that could actually better the system. Okay. A lot of people are not paying their taxes, okay? Not because they decided they will not pay. Okay. Trust me. It's about who is going to collect the monies and how the person is collecting mm -hmm. the monies. Okay? So you don't expect that the person who is selling the goods, running his factory somewhere around... Has yeah. to travel all the way to Circle to come and make payments. Yeah. It's a tedious process. No, absolutely. I, yeah, I mean, I agree so with you. if you had a process where the person would be prompted and then someone follows up with a call, the human phase is what mm. we are talking about. Mm. Customer in the center of the game. Yeah. So I call you, David. Mr. David, how are you this morning? And then I tell you, this is how much you owe. I will send it, you a mail. If you have any questions, you can call back. My name yeah. is Abna. Yeah. You know, so assign and attach persons to group of customers mm. so that when you go to the banks, they have relationship officers. Mm. So let's have t tax relationship officers dealing with those who have a muscle. I mean, big companies, Kasaprekun, go there, talk to them, their branches. You know, when you do this, trust me, people will be ready to pay. And when it comes to the payment, yeah. it shouldn't be always check and cash. Yeah. Like, uh, it, it could also be through the, they have developed some things, but people are saying the systems are delaying. Okay. So if I can they, pay, via a text message. Look, I, I was sent a message by the uh, East Municipal Assembly okay. about my business operating permit. Mm. There was not even a, a single phone number on the, uh, on, on the message. <laughs> so how do I get back? Yeah. That means I have to go to Abukubi at all costs. Yeah. So all I'm saying is that when this happens, I'm going to be leaving my business to drive all the way to so Abukubi. GRA yeah. themselves are making it difficult for 
yeah. themselves yes. so to, let's heal yeah, that one to, yes. to, to, but, to collect money. Yes, yes you but, want to say but, but then the incentives mm. need not be financial incentives. Right. Yeah, but, no, but, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, but I then, mean, for me, I'm right. looking at incentives then, across board. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. clearly. But, but then uh, incentives like a friendly uh, tax paying environment, mm. uh, the proactivity of the staff uh, in uh, encouraging payment from uh, taxpayers. Mm. So proximity to payment points. Mm. I mean, these are, and then even information about how to go about uh, honoring your tax. Uh, mm. Because most of the time, they, they, um, the challenges that most people have is not because they don't want to pay, yeah. but then they lack information as to how and what. Mm. So you need some kind of uh, uh, initiative from the GRA to be able to deal with these questions of what and how mm. by making information very simple and accessible yeah. to potential uh, ta taxpayers. Mm. And here we are not talking about the quoting the law as it is in the, uh, in the legal documents mm. to citizens. Mm but then trying to break them down so that at least communication will be achieved at the end of the day, yeah. even if they have to do it in the local uh, Language. langu languages. Yeah. Uh, because what you want at the end of the day is that people are working in voluntarily yeah. to yeah. honor their tax yeah, obligations. obligations. Yeah. I want to paint a picture for you. Mm -hmm. uh, since we're talking about digital economy, right? right? Um, so... One of the things I love doing is photography, okay? And um, I actually have a photography business, okay? Now, imagine that I've taken a beautiful picture, right? And I have a website, and I sell pictures from my website. I've created an e-transaction platform so that you can pay by Visa. When, it, when you pay, it, it's routed into an account. Right, so you make the payment. The payment hits my account. I've received money. I don't even know who you are. You live in Greenland, for all I care. You saw a beautiful picture. You wanted to buy it. You didn't even talk to me because you don't have to talk to me. It's a platform. The picture is there. You pay immediately. A code is given. You apply the code. The picture is released. You can download it in whatever form you know, whether it's low resolution, medium, or high resolution, depending on what you paid. Immediately, you have access to a picture. You download it. Transaction has taken place. <clears throat> so you have a picture now on your machine, which you bought online from my website. I have been paid. The money is sitting in my account. Mm -hmm. How does government get to be part of this process? Because mm -hmm. I created the image mm -hmm. by going out, did my work, I have the picture. Mm -hmm. I've sold it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've benefited from mm -hmm. the work I did. Mm -hmm. How does government jump in in this chain yeah. uh, and benefit uh, uh, from uh, taxation? Uh, but David, you see, tax is not as if um, um, government needs to actually come to your factory and play a role mm -hmm. directly, you mm -hmm. know, in what you're doing. But creating the enabling environment also comes with, let's say, putting the telecom infrastructures in place, which you are using anyway. Mm -hmm. And those telecom infrastru infrastructures are in place, are using the space of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And you need to be paying for... Using yes, so, but that's indirect. And, 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 and that's, the, that's, the, right. that's, the, right. that's the, one of the challenges that okay. the digital um, economy mm -hmm. uh, presents. Because mm -hmm. first of all, government needs to have the ability to know mm. that this transaction has taken place. Yeah. And currently, that ability or capacity is, 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 is not there mm -hmm. because we are still working with the old model yeah. of fiscal, yeah. fiscal uh, businesses. So uh, now, how do we overcome this particular challenge? Yeah. And that will come, by, uh, come through a partnership mm -hmm. between the tax authorities and some of these uh, operators of the digital uh, platform. Okay. So, for example, which 
platform did you use to transact that business? So let's say is Visa. It, it, so, so Visa. Mm -hmm. So it means that there need to be some form some of collaboration, collaboration between, between the GRA, GRA and, and Visa, Visa and data sharing Okay. Uh, so that at okay. least the G, GRA will have an idea mm. about the flow of, of, of funds. They should uh, pay from, us for this free consultancy <laughs> we are giving no, them. But, 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 but there's that from, collaboration yeah. between them, the Registrar General's Department, mm. SNED, they do mm, that yeah. with um, the yeah. VLA, because yeah. when people bring vehicles in, uh, and so like you rightly said, I mean, <laughs> the, the agencies mm. that are operating within, yeah. even the, within, within the government space, yeah. Like Leonard is saying, they should be collaborating. Mm -hmm. a, there needs to be a lot of yeah. collaboration with the agencies, yeah. get data and information, yeah. and yeah. also make sure they get systems in place yeah. to absorb and, and, this and, and, pressure. And since government currently do not have the ability to detect mm. that transaction, the only way government will be able to find out is uh, getting in touch with third party mm. that allow uh, set transaction mm. and visa is only one mm. example and i believe uh, looking at the, uh, the 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 time period that yeah. visa has been in existence there should be some form of collaboration oh, I think so. but, but then the problem has to do with some of these new and upcoming platforms right. which are equally uh, popular very new yeah. <laughs> and, and all I, I think, I think one area is our, our work with uh, uh, the at the, the western region you remember when it came up with that the banks also uh, giving information you know i mean collaborating and then in the pool giving information because the truth is that you know sometimes maybe you can tell me that you're not doing any business Mm. You know, you can tell me you've not uh, uh, done any business done for it, yeah. this year. It's not working for you. Mm. But your bank account can show that you've been transacting businesses yeah. and making so much money. Yeah. So one of the discussions that were on the, on the table over there was actually the collaborative mm. efforts. M with maybe there could agencies. be some confidentiality around that. Yeah. Well, but I mean, of course, the data protection for the, for the so, transactions, but then the sales, transactions, businesses yeah. that you transact right. mm. off visa mm. between you and other business, those ones cannot be. Uh, confidential. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I, I'm thinking about something in my mind, right? And I'm just thinking that look, maybe government is stuck in, you know, 1960 because part of the problem seems to be that we are using the Register General as the almost like a singular source of no, of knowledge of who is in business. Right. But every day, every day for the last seven to 15 years, people have been opening businesses online without necessarily having to go and register. Right. If they want to play high stakes and say, let me get into a space where I can do work with multinationals, with government, whatever, they'll go and register. But really, there's a lot of business that happens that you don't need to go and register it officially. You just open online and you have a name. Mm -hmm. Now, that's for marketing purposes, you have to have a name. So once you have a name, who is checking that? Mm -hmm. Who is checking all those businesses that have opened online yeah. as registered businesses? Mm -hmm. But, but, yeah. but David, uh, do you see uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, it comes with the, it comes to a question of the collaboration mm. among the agencies and data sharing between the Registrar General's Department the GRA mm. and um, I mean the relevant yeah. stak stakeholders in there mm. and the relevant stakeholders in there but so 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 if you have that form that form of collaboration mm. and information sharing yeah some of these information that comes from the registrar general will be useful for the GRA mm. but then the GRA must first have a purpose for for, for, for that for okay. that for that data okay. and utilization of that mm. data. But David, in the face of all this policing and the difficulties and, and the, the complexities, trust you, I also believe this one that um, it has to do a lot with communication, because people also presume that the, that the processes of registering businesses and doing these tax regimes are so complex. They sometimes some people are very smart on the computer, but they don't even want to talk. They don't even want to. Spend mm. time, you know, yeah. uh, at the desk and being feeling mm. embarrassed. So mm. if you give the human face, you are enticing people, the need for them to come and register their businesses, the recognition you give them and how they feel important, yeah. they will come on board and pay the taxes. For, of course, re really, some of them are making thousands and paying that minute mm. amount of, let's say, hundreds or tens. I mean, would not pull them down, you know. So 
really, really, I think tax communication is one thing that mm. the GRA yeah. must up their game on and okay. then also have the centered approach that they want to do that is a human-centered approach, mm. customer in the middle, then they play the game around them with their collaborative agencies and make mm. sure that the customer feels important to move straight to them and give them the money that we need mm. to build that bulk of cash we need to build this nation. Trust you. Moving forward, um, looking at 2020, what are some of the things that you guys are involved in, you know, to, to help awareness and, and all of that? Um, are there any things that you're doing? Oh, uh, I mean, we are, we are rounding off the year with a uh, number of uh, fora. Okay. Uh, so we have what we call the uh, Ghana Tax Dialogue Public Forum on Tax Compliance mm. and Responsibility. Mm. Uh, we've already visited three regions. We've been, oh, really? to, Tema, we've been to the Northern region in Temale, mm -hmm. and then we've been to Kumasi in the Ashanti region, and then also Takrade uh, in the Western region. Yeah. Uh, next, we will be in the Volta region uh, next week, and the Eastern region, and then we'll be going to Brongafo, and then the Western North mm. uh, on this on this tour, and it's it's to bring together um, stakeholders from the business sector, from civil society, and then also from government. Okay. Uh, particularly the GRA mm. to look at how we can um, deal with the, some of the challenges when it comes to comply mm. compliance. Mm. Why are we not? Why? Why? Why is, is it that there's a low level or rate of compliance? Mm. I mean, the different stakeholders see the problems differently. Okay. We bring that bringing them into a room uh, where they are we, they are seated together. At least we can discuss from the different perspectives and then maybe arrive on some uh, way forward solutions mm. that we can agree on uh, to, 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 to pursue and then feed that to the tax policy units of the Ministry of Finance and then the GRA mm. to see how we, we can improve on, 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 on compliance. But then lastly, on the, on the uh, digital economy uh, issue, I think it's about time the uh, GRA also allow its system to evolve yeah. <laughs> with the, I agree. With the, with the evolving tax issues and dynamic issues. Because they, by now they, they should have a department or a division. That's why I said 1960. A, div <laughs> a division <laughs> devoted to yeah. digital uh, yeah. taxation, yeah. where they bring in the crop of people that are knowledgeable, that will help them in the identification of online uh, transactions, transactions and the quantum of, of, trans, of transactions that are being conducted yeah. uh, online. And I mean, for, for this one, it's a technical issue mm. and you cannot have administrators yeah. uh, think, uh, sitting and thinking about how to deal with it. They need to bring, they need to bring in some experts that will help them uh, identify and then tax uh, some of these transactions. These are revenue losses to, to, the, to the country that can be recovered. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, I've been speaking to uh, Jeffrey Okansi and Leonard Shankote of the Tax Justice Coalition. And we've been talking tax and the dig digital economy. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the next segment. Hi there. We hope you enjoyed the show. Make sure to subscribe. Like, comment, and share with your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.